just uh, before I get started, how many of you in here have actually written a piece of software? That's good. That's really good. So the reason for taking the break, and this is more me ranting than anything else, is that we had to deal with really badly written software. So I had created my presentation using Keynote, the lovely new version of Keynote that I had to use on upgrading to the lovely new version of the operating system on the computer that I use. And it turns out that saving a file in that version of Keynote doesn't mean it's compatible with older versions of Keynote, which was actually really unintuitive from a user's point of view. And actually ties in a little bit with what I'm going to talk about, because as much as APIs and the new dial tone, and I want to talk about how important APIs are, it's really important to remember that through all of this, through everything we talk about APIs, the end result somewhere is a user. And for everything we do, for all of the creating APIs we do, our end goal is creating great experiences for users. Whether that's us, ourselves, or in previous talks, they talked about how Twitter opened up an API so that people could write great clients for their service too. So we're going to talk about APIs, but the user is ultimately the king or queen or whoever, the most important person at the end of the whole package. Uh, so I'm Ben. Uh, hi. If any of you are on Twitter, please feel free to follow me. Uh, I often talk about APIs and more often than not what I've had for breakfast. Uh, and I look after marketing for Europe at Twilio. How many of you have heard of or used Twilio before? Cool. Lots of people who haven't, which is, is fantastic. I get to tell you all about Twilio. So Twilio is a cloud communications company. We are essentially an API. What we do is give developers an API to do text messaging, voice calling, and VoIP across the world. So the company was founded in 2008 by a guy called uh, Jeff. And Jeff had previously worked on a business called StubHub. Now, StubHub has been recently bought by eBay. It's their kind of way of selling concert tickets last minute. But StubHub, when it was founded, was there to try and do quick ticket sales. And the problem that Jeff found was that to do quick ticket sales, he wanted to be able to send people text message alerts. So he was based in San Francisco, and he started building this product to try and do text message alerts and found it really difficult. Because actually, carriers don't get the importance of APIs a lot of the time. And so Jeff found that he had to work with different carriers and different people around the world just to try and send text messages to a small subset of phones that were on a small subset of network carriers. And so when Jeff sold StubHub, he decided to look into that problem in a bit more detail, and that's what Twilio has become. So Twilio is a way for developers really simply and easily to send and receive voice calls, text messages, and VoIP stuff through whatever it is they're building. So actually, for us, it's all about software people. All of our customers are developers because we are an API company. And we have kind of a unique perspective on APIs, given as they are our bread and butter. They are all we do. Without our API, we are nothing. Our company is an API. So I thought it might be useful to share some insights from growing up over the past few years as an API company, as many of you start this journey towards looking into or building or using APIs. And actually, this quote is kind of important. It's all about software people. Let me tell you what I mean by a software person. A software person, someone who builds, creates, does stuff with software, is anyone that can see the world through the lens of software. You can look at a problem and find a software solution for it. Let me give you an example. You all know what this thing is here, a remote control. How many of you have something that looks similar to this in your home? Yeah, quite a number of people. And so this thing here is the same every day of its life. Those buttons are decided long in advance of a manufacturing process. That is sent to a factory, it is built, it is programmed, and then it never gets updated. It sits on my coffee table from the day I get it until the day it goes in the recycling. All of those buttons are labeled. They do the same thing every time I go to press them. That is a hardware problem. That is not a software solution. There's software running on that thing. It communicates with my set-top box, but it's not a software people solution. If you compare it to this remote control here, 
Fewer buttons is the first thing that I notice about that remote control. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven buttons on that remote control. It has less buttons than that one has numbers at the bottom of it. And yet, does anything. It is the same problem approached from a software people point of view and from a non-software people point of view. And if you look at any problem through the world of software, you can start to see that actually creating something that people can use in different ways, that you can update later down the line, that isn't locked in and tied to a piece of hardware or to something that you know is proprietary and can't change and is out of your control. That's not thinking in terms of software people. And developers, people that use APIs, they are software people. So we built Twilio, our product, and people build APIs for software people. We can update our API if we need to. We can do things to improve on it without breaking core functionality. That's writing a good API. But I think the biggest learning when we kind of first started out into the world of creating APIs is that software developers are not just pizza-loving code monkeys. How many people in here like pizza? See, I do, but I'm not just a pizza-loving code monkey. I stand up and talk to people sometimes as well. But the key thing is realizing that developers aren't just people that will sit down and do what you tell them to and churn out mediocre code. There's beauty in writing software. People get passionate about it. People get really excited about writing software. And the simpler and easier you can make it for people to interact with an API or with a piece of your software or your service, people will get excited about it. Twilio didn't start out trying to do developer marketing. What we did was built something cool for developers, went out and spoke to developers, let them use it easily, and they did. Developers love tools. Developers love having new tools in their arsenal. Developers love being able to play with things, being able to pull things apart and try new things. And in anything that you're building or creating, you have the opportunity to partner with developers. You have the opportunity to give developers access to whatever you're up to by thinking in terms of creating an API. And that's really good, because that builds a bridge, a local uh, connection here. Uh, I change my bridge picture every time I do this talk, based on where I am. Um, but it's a, it's a fantastic bridge to build an API into your product. Because not only are you saying, I care about developers, and I want developers to be able to, to build on top of what I'm building. It also says that you're open to partnering with people, that as much as you have a great business model and you really believe in the thing that you're building, you know that in software, often things can be greater together than the sum of their parts. And really, that leads me to the kind of idea that if you build a service, you have an API. And it's kind of important to start thinking about what an API really is. Because an API is just a way for developers to access your service. That could just mean the developers inside your company. You could be a giant software house creating big new products, and you don't want to give people from the outside world access to that. Some of the most successful hack days and hackathons I've seen were done inside a company. A big company in the UK that specializes in selling food had an internal hack day a little while ago where they had spent a lot of time opening up APIs for a lot of the stuff that they do with order processing and everything, documenting those as APIs, and they just let software developers within their own company loose with their imagination to see what they built which is a great way of innovating. If you've got a product and you're not sure of its potential, throw a bunch of developers at it. Because developers are brilliant. Software people are brilliant. Please raise your hand if you think that developers are brilliant. Maybe a little big-headed, but you are. Anyone that writes a line of code is a brilliant person. And APIs are for them. And so if you have any kind of hope of what you're building succeeding, if you ever, as, as I ever do when I write something, or in previous lives when I've built a product, have some kind of hope that it actually becomes better than I ever imagined it would be, 
throw developers at a problem. You know, they say that if you put an infinite number of monkeys in a room, you'll get Shakespeare. You only need 10 developers to get something awesome out of something that you're building. And really, it comes down to what you want at the end of the day. When you're building things, how many of you would actually like to see happy customers and some profit at some point? Quite a few of you don't care about happy customers, it seems. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but when you've got an API, when you've got a service that people can access, your product doesn't stand alone anymore. You've got your product, plus the imagination of hundreds and thousands, if not millions, of software developers around the world to build something cool. When we first started building Twilio, we didn't really know, other than things like notifications, what people would use it for. But we thought it was a cool service to build. We made it as open as possible and as easy as possible for people to sign up to. I have seen people over the past five years that Twilio has been around use Twilio for two-factor authentication. We've got people who have built entire core centers using our software and uh, airdrop Chromebooks to people's doors with the software set up on it. They open the Chromebook and you've got another customer support agent online straight away. I've seen people text enable a city. There's a project in Bristol in the UK called Hello Lamppost. And they gave every lamppost, park, bench, and post box a phone number. And you could have a conversation with it. And actually, what it did was build up this huge kind of social dialogue of what people in the city were thinking about and talking about. And the local council was able to gauge the mood of people. I had no idea that people would do that when we started building this product. But developers have made it awesome. Developers do really cool things with it. And actually, it comes down to kind of my kind of, uh, concluding point, is that companies have to realize that they are only successful if their customers are successful. And the best way to make your customers successful is to let people have that kind of imaginative, creative input into your product. A great way to do that is by creating an API. And actually, I was looking through this article, uh, 10 companies with serious developer cred. And when you're thinking about building an API or working on an API, you have to think about the people the API is for. The API is for developers. And what do developers want? I wanted to share a few kind of points of best practice from our time at Twilio. Because actually, one of the most important things for an API is documentation. Developers want to pick up stuff and play with it, and they want to know how to do things. So one of the steps that we took as an API, our documentation is available on the home page without having to log in, without having to have an account. If you want to know how to do something, you go to twilio.com, and the docs link is right up there. You click it, you get access to documentation. We're not the only company to do this. Stripe, who are a great payments API, also have their documentation just without logging in. If you're creating an API, document it well. Tell people about it, because the word will spread. Developers are social. We made it really, really easy for people to log in and play with things. So to, to sign up for Twilio and start playing with it, you don't need to pay us anything. You sign up for an account with your first name, last name, email address, and a hopefully secure password. And then you can start playing with it. You have a trial account. You have some trial credit. It works anywhere in the world. You can just sign up and send text messages, which is cool. Developers love that. GitHub do that as well. I mean, GitHub's a great um, a kind of part tool, part social network, I guess, for developers. Uh, they've been around for five years. But suddenly, there was a way for people to use uh, a repository system in a really social, collaborative way. And GitHub made it very easy to sign up as well. You just go, put a username in, email, password. You're done. No more sign-up steps. It's also really important when you're thinking about dealing with developers to think about pricing. So APIs are not always free. You have to pay to send and receive text messages and voice calls on our API. But we make those prices, wherever you are in the world, as clear and transparent as possible. Because developers don't mind paying you money if you're not trying to stab them in the back while you do it. Charge developers, but be honest and open about your pricing. SendGrid does that really well as well. You go to SendGrid's homepage, the pricing is right there. And the last thing I want to touch on before I 
open up to any questions and then eventually let you all go off for lunch, which I'm sure you're all very anxious for at this point in time. We didn't start out with a marketing department at all. We started out with developer evangelists. How many of you have heard of or met a developer evangelist before? It's a great job title, especially if you've got a bit of an ego. But a developer evangelist is a developer who loves your API. And they could be an employee, or they could just be a member of the community. But Twilio didn't hire marketing people. It hired developer evangelists. And developer evangelists are a great way to send someone who is technical out to a community of other developers and get them to talk about your API, to show off your API, to demo your API. And actually, that's what developers care about. Slides are not really the best way to reach a software developer. Writing some code is. Whenever we go to events with a developer evangelist or a crowd of mostly developers, we break out terminal and we start writing some code and we show people an API. In fact, my favorite demo is I get everyone's text into me and then I make their phones ring simultaneously and everyone picks it up and gets played Never Going to Give You Up by Rick Astley. <laughs> it doesn't make me particularly popular at events, but... But the key thing with all of this, whether you've got developer evangelists or you're just kind of enabling other members of the community to go out and be advocates for you, is if you've got an API, you need to help developers help to make your product better. That doesn't mean employing them. That doesn't necessarily mean giving them secret access to stuff. But by building and creating an API, or utilizing an API in your product, you're saying to developers that you value their ideas and opinions, you think that you and your product could stand to learn something from having an API, and actually what you do contributes to the entire developer space. You heard a lot earlier about different types of API, different models, different business models, all of that kind of thing. But what is it? Fundamentally, an API is a bridge into your product for developers to help uh, build and create and experiment on. And actually, this collaborative way of working and thinking, this way of people helping to make your product better, that is far more powerful than any advertising campaign you could ever run because people get passionate about what you do. People love what you do. People build on top of what you do. And people go out and talk about that. And before you know it, you've got an army of really strong, passionate developers building your API, your product, into other things. And then, before you know it, you've got a product that is global, that is worldwide, and that people are making use of. So an API is not just some kind of thing to take lightly or something for geeks or nerds to play with. An API can be a really important part of what you do. And I would love to see more people building and opening up APIs and the things that they're creating for the world to have a play with as well. So that was my kind of ranting at you for 20 odd minutes. Again, if you want any, any more questions, please feel free to ask on Twitter. I'll be around you in the break as well. But I can't wait to see what you all go off and build. Thank you.